Hi everyone, I've tried to film the beginning of this video several times, so I'm just gonna go with whatever I say this time. A few months ago, I made a video talking about living with anxiety and intrusive thoughts and catastrophizing. A lot of my feeling anxious is tied up with hospital trauma and spending a lot of time in the hospital when I was younger, having loads of operations, and also living with a health condition whereby I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 10, 20 years. There is a chance I could lose my sight. I have complicated health stuff, which I've spoken about on this channel before. In the comments section of that video, I had lots of requests from you guys asking if I could make a video talking about how I cope with feeling anxious, what I'm doing when I'm not having a great day. So that is what this video is. But before I get into the things that I have listed on this sheet of paper, I wanted to highlight that this is a list of short-term things that I do. These are mostly ways to distract myself from feeling anxious and we've all got to deal with the root cause of why we feel anxious as well. We can't just distract ourselves indefinitely. So as much as I recommend the things on this list, if your mental health isn't great, if you are feeling whatever way you happen to be feeling, whatever kind of mental health stuff we're talking about, please do talk to somebody, please talk to a friend, a family member, a colleague, a healthcare professional. Since I made that video at the beginning of the year, the rare diseases clinic where I go have offered me psychotherapy, so I go there once a week. Thank you, NHS. So whatever works for you long-term, please do also do those things. This is not a list of things that will help you indefinitely forever. These are just fun things, and also some of them are basic things um, that I sometimes forget to do when I'm feeling anxious. Um, yes, so with all of that, let's get on to the list. So this list is in no particular order. At the top of my list, this list, I have yoga with Adrian. I don't do yoga to be fit. I'm probably actually not that great at yoga if someone came and looked at, you know, the way that I'm moving, etc. That's not why I do it. I do it to help myself feel calm. And I'm sure that many of you are familiar with her channel. I'll link it in the description box down below, but I bought myself a yoga mat and I try and do a little bit every morning. It's not always possible. And because I'm not doing it for keeping fit purposes, I actually tend to do the same one again and again because I think the repetition also helps calm me. It was one of her 30 day challenges that she did a few years ago, I think, and it's one called Trust, and I tend to do the first 15, 20 minutes of that, which is mainly actually a lot of breathing and stretching. It's very slow. It helps to calm me, but I think also helps to frame my day. As I mentioned, I'm freelance and that means that I have to be really organised. I have made a video where I speak about how I organise my life, how I organise my time, so if that is of interest to you then I'll link that in the description box down below. Hey, you can watch it even if you just like stationery, <laughs> um, but as well as using it for work purposes. If I am overthinking things, I find that it helps to externalize those things, and that works in many different forms. Obviously, talking to someone about something you're anxious about is great, but if you're just overthinking all the things that you have to do, and that's making you feel panicky, putting that onto a list makes you feel as though you're starting to process those things, you're starting to think about the order in which you're going to do them. So even if it's not work stuff, sometimes I like to make lists just so that I feel a little bit more organized and that helps me feel calmer too. Tying in with freelance life, if I don't have meetings in town, I don't tend to leave the house very much, which isn't very good for my headspace. So I try and get outside every day. I try and take the time that I would commute to an office to walk. I've mentioned on my channel before at weekends, Mr M, that's my husband and I, like to get out of London and go on day walks wherever we can. There's a brilliant website that we use called The Walking Club, which I'll link in the description box down below. They have day walks that you can get to on trains easily from London and it is a fantastic resource. I will insert some footage here of a recent walk that we did, which is one of our favorites, which is from Milford to Hazelmere with a pub lunch stop in Thursley on the way. It's a really, really beautiful walk. So I recommend getting outside, even if it's just walking around the block a few times, just changing the space that you're looking at and it will make 
you think in a different way. So that is one of my main recommendations. And another basic thing, and I know it's really basic, but I have to mention it because as I said, sometimes I forget to do the basic stuff when I'm feeling really anxious. And that is, am I drinking and am I eating properly? So am I drinking lots of water, staying hydrated, which will help me focus as well? And am I eating healthy stuff? Yes, it's nice to eat treats and to treat yourself and all of that stuff and I am an advocate for that but I find that my sugar levels do this if I'm having too much sugar and caffeine throughout the day and that just makes me feel a bit miserable as well and it certainly does not help with my anxiety. Something that is a problem for me when I'm feeling anxious and I'm overthinking and I'm catastrophizing is that I can give my brain too much time and space to think, so I need to focus it, but I need to focus it in quite a specific way. When I am working, my brain is focused and generally I'm absolutely fine because I have, well not absolutely fine, but I have a task that definitely takes up all of my attention. But when I'm not working, and say I'm reading, I think it's very easy, even though that's a task that requires focus, to allow your mind to slip away. So I often use something else when I'm reading, another sound that's in the room. I really enjoy the Harry Potter ASMR rooms that I've seen knocking around on YouTube, which I'll link down below. Netflix and other places also have fire settings, so it's like your computer has a warm fire in it, and that crackling noise in the background I think helps my brain keep focused on the other tasks that I'm doing. In the evening there are two things that I like to do, and I would say that both of these fulfil a similar criteria. So one of those is cooking and one of them is playing board games. Cooking, necessity, you need to eat. Board games, some may say less of a necessity, but I would perhaps argue otherwise. Cooking gives you a set of instructions and you can follow them, and I find that quite therapeutic, and I will often listen to an audiobook while I'm cooking as well. The board games, I have fallen in love with board games over the past few years. I used to love them as a kid and then I didn't really play them. And then as I said a few years ago, I started collecting new board games again. And if you would like me to make a video where I talk about some of my favorite board games, I would absolutely do that. So just let me know <laughs> if you would like me to do that. Um, but one of my favorite games, or I should say, these ones here fall into the category of some of my favorite games and I wanted to quickly show you them today. Um, this part of the video is very kindly sponsored by Oxford Games, which is a company that I have worked with in the past a few times. I've done their podcast, I've done live events with them, and then last year I included some of their games in my Christmas gift guide because I really, really love them. The reason that I'm including them here is because one, board games make me feel calm, as I said, but also two, these are book board games and I have a feeling that many of you will like that because most of you are here because you, like me, really love books. So let me show them to you. This is the game that I think they are most known for. It's certainly the game of theirs that I came across first and was actually the game that I played on their podcast when I did it. So it's called Ex Libris, the game of first lines and last words. And this is about bluffing your way to victory. So in here, there is a pile of cards and on those cards, you get the title of a book and the blurb. And then you and your fellow playees are all tasked with writing a fake first or last line of that book. You then shuffle them all together along with the real first or last line, whichever one you've been told that you need to write. And one of you who hasn't written anything down has to read all the lines that everyone has come up with and guess which one they think is the right line. If they guess correctly, they get a point. If they guess incorrectly, then the person who had made up that line gets the point. And it can be really hilarious because you can take it really seriously and try and write what you think would really be the first or last line. Or you can try and write something quite outrageous which sometimes people fall for. Something that is similar but also different is this game here called Flummox, the foreign language bluffers game. And in this, you're not making up the first or last lines of a book, you're making up the definition of a foreign word and then the other person has to guess which definition is the correct one. And as well as this being really fun, you also get to learn stuff, which I think is really fascinating. Even though these, I would say, are best played with a group of people, 
you can play them with two people because you could make up several fake definitions and shuffle it in with the real one and then the other person has to guess which is real. In fact, Jean and I recorded a podcast where we played Flummox and it was so much fun. So I'll link that in the description box down below if you would like to go and take a look. The third game is this one here, which is Bookworm, a game of reading and remembering. This is a board game as opposed to a card game. So I'll insert some footage here so you can see what it looks like after it's been set up. In this, you on your go are read a card by another player that has a paragraph from an actual book on it. And that paragraph is going to be really heavy on the detail front. So how many stairs a character climbs up, the color of the wallpaper, how many sugars they put in their tea, exactly how many minutes it takes them to get to work. So all this information that you couldn't possibly try and remember all of, but you have to try because then immediately after that, they ask you questions about the paragraph that they've just read to you and for every answer you guess correctly, you get to move forward a square. It can get quite intense and also for some reason makes me very giggly. The final one is this one here, which is called Anagram, the ingenious game of juggling words. So an anagram based game. These are all so much fun. And as I said, board games help me feel calmer, they distract me. So if you are also interested in board games, let me know if you would like me to make a video where I talk about lots of different kinds, but I thought these ones would be of particular interest to you as they are book related. And if you would like 20% off anything from their website, you can use the code GEN20 at checkout. They ship internationally. They're also just a mother and daughter company so you're supporting a small business which is always really wonderful and these would make great Christmas gifts too. I will leave details in the description box down below. I have three more things that help me out. Two of them are apps and I think I've mentioned them both on this channel before. So the first one is the Calm app. I actually use this on quite a basic level I think. I know that it has lots of functions that I haven't made the best use of. You can use it for uh, meditating and it takes you through different steps. And I think there's a seven day program or something like that. You can check it out. But mostly what I use it for is their scenes. So they have a lake scene, they have the sea. I think I mostly use the rain setting and they have some calm music as well. So they just bring up an image that, well, a short video that repeats itself again and again with sound on. And that's really great with headphones if say you're on the tube and it's really busy or you're just, you want to, take a moment for yourself somewhere. And the thing that is frustrating about this app, but is also really good, actually, when you think about it, is that you can't use your phone and do other stuff when you're using it. So if you have the screen open with rain and it's making that noise, you can't then go onto another app and scroll and do other things whilst listening to the rain. And that is very good for focusing, especially if you're using it for meditating as well. So I would recommend that one. And the other app that I use is actually a game and it's called Monument Valley. I discovered it about four or four years ago. It was a long time ago and I fell completely in love with it. And they have a couple of um, versions now. It's beautiful. Definitely play it with headphones if you can, because the way that the music fits in with the graphics is just astounding. It reminds me a little bit of Miyazaki, um, not in style, but I am um, in drawing style, I mean, but just in the overall feel of it. It's like a weird Alice in Wonderland. It's a game that's centered around logic and impossible geometry. And it is tricky sometimes, but you will get there. It's a case of almost like going through a maze, lots of false starts. If you just work your way through it, you will find out the answer and you will be able to get through to the next level. And I find that reassuring in a way, um, just to try and solve that problem it's very satisfactory and as I said, beautiful. So I'll insert a little bit here so that you can see just how beautiful this game is.
The final thing that I wanted to mention is something I have recently mentioned on this channel as well, and that is that Mr. M and I have started collecting houseplants. Now I know that that is a trendy thing to do, but we're doing it because we find it fun and also therapeutic. It's fun to do all the research into the plants that you could have for the conditions that you have and the place that you live. Going to a plant sale or a garden center, love a garden center, which definitely means that I'm old now. And just seeing the fruits of your labor, but not in a literal sense because these plants don't grow fruit, but seeing how the plants fare under your care. I will show you some cutaways of some of the plants we've got. We have got Hagrid, who is a mistletoe cactus. We have Ed, who is a donkey tail plant. We have several spider plants called Anastasia, Dimitri, and Anya. And we have a prayer plant called Zima. So that's something that we've really enjoyed, along with then going to see plants out and about, which I suppose ties in with the walking element, but um, we went to Kew at the weekend, for instance, and looked around all of the hot houses there, which was really, really beautiful. And it was fun to see some of the house plants that we have much bigger on a much larger scale. Um, yeah, so that's a list of some of the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis to distract my brain and make me feel better. I hope that in whatever capacity this list is helpful for some of you guys. I would love to know in the comment section what you do either when you're feeling anxious or when you're just in general feeling stressed out. As I mentioned, thank you very much to Oxford Games for sponsoring the part of this video and if you would like to go and check out their website, I'll link it down below and you can use the code GEN20 at checkout to get 20% off everything in your basket. I hope you're all having a great week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.